Hi everyone. Um, we already did this video, but I did it with music and everyone has requested that I talk in the videos. So I'm going to, as I have time, change all the videos over to me talking. So this is a great video. One of my mother's favorites because her favorite bird is the cardinal. You can put any bird on there that you like. And here are tools and our supplies. And we're going to start by rolling out a sheet of brown clay for the backing. Now this does not have to be really thick. It can be very, very thin because we're going to be putting the logs on for the log cabin and that'll really thicken up the ornament. But you want a backing for it. Now you can use a house cookie cutter or draw a house like I did and cut out a template for yourself. This ornament I would say is maybe three and a half to four inches. And as you can see, you can make them different sizes. You can make it smaller or larger. I wouldn't go larger than the four inches, but you can make it smaller. Get those bubbles out of there. Now we're just going to make brown logs, which is funny because they're going to be logs for the log cabin. And try to make them all about the same size. Now you can also do this log cabin as a standalone ornament and not as a birdhouse. You can just do it as a regular log cabin. Yeah, this one's a little bit more work because you have to roll out all the logs. And I could jump ahead and have the logs put on there, but I, I want you to see the process. Not that it's that interesting or, or difficult, but there we are. See, I'm just making an impression so you can see where to put the logs because after the logs are on your house, we're, we're going to cut them. And, you know, I, I was going to talk about uh, what we're going to do in 2020, but hopefully this video will be seen five years from now and they'll go, what the heck is she talking about 2020? So hopefully I'll be around in five years from now. After all, I am an old woman. Yeah, I plan on being around. So we're going to stack the logs. Once you get up to that roof line, make them a little bit longer. And as I say there, make sure they go straight across.
I was watching a video this morning of a woman showing how to get corks out of uh, salt and pepper shakers if they get pushed inside. And she said, my friend got me this really great tool. I don't know what it is. And I was practically yelling at the computer, that's a needle tool. <laughs> so you can use your needle tool to get corks out of salt and pepper shakers if they get pushed in. So now we've stacked it up. And now we're going to cut out the house, the cabin. Uh-oh, text message. Should have shut my phone off. Why do I keep forgetting to do that? Okay, that's me turning the sound down on my phone, sorry. Now make sure you get that overhang. Well, I could have done a little better on the right hand side with that overhang. Maybe I will fix it. The beauty of polymer clay, you can fix things. Yes, I got a text message from my nephew's girlfriend. She needs a ride to work, and apparently everyone thinks I'm the free Uber service, but I will take her. The worst part of that is the road we have to go down to take her to work is probably the busiest road in town, and the traffic is horrible. But I will do it. Now we got to put some slow, not slow, I can't talk. We have to put some snow on the cabin. And this is going to be on the bottom, the snow on the bottom. Then again, maybe not. It'll be the snow on the roof first. And all I do here is I, I put that uh, rope on and then I just kind of pull it down with my finger to make it look like melting snow coming off the roof. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, make sure you wash your fingers, your fingers, your hands before you use the white. I see how I'm just pulling it down. It almost looks scalloped, but that's to make it look like the, the snow is melting. I like to put the hook in because when you start working and putting your details on and then you leave the, the hook to the very end, you might just squish some of those details when you try to get that hook in. Okay, I call it a hook. I know everybody probably calls it a hanger, but to me it's a hook. You will always hear me calling it a hook. So we're going to put that in. There's the back. I really love these uh, plastic coated paper clips in the different colors.
Now this we actually could have done before we put the roof on, but sometimes I forget my orders, what order I should put stuff in. That's okay, because it doesn't matter. It still will look the same. And if this is the first video you're watching, you make the candy cane rope by rolling out white and red, putting them together, and then twisting. I am texturing the logs to make them look more like a log instead of just a, just a brown log. Make it look like the real thing. And this is one of those little details that customers will notice if you sell your ornaments. And if you give them as gifts, I'm sure the recipients will notice and appreciate that. You want that little extra step to make that detail. And again, I could have done that before I put the candy cane rope on. Got that flashing light again in this video. I, I really don't know why it does that. It wasn't doing that, or I didn't notice it when I was making the ornament. Have to look into that. There. Can you see that detail? Doesn't that make a difference? It makes such a great difference, I think. All right. On to the next. I'm doing two teardrop shapes and I'm going to make a heart, but you can also use a cookie cutter. If you want it to look more rustic, I would make the hearts this way. If you want it to look a little more finished and professional and modern, you can use a cookie cutter. But either way is fine. Blend in the seam. You don't want it to look like someone's butt. That was a terrible thing to say, sorry, <laughs> but yeah. And this is where I put the year, if I personalize it. And the name will go on the bottom. And you'll see that on, you probably saw that on the smaller ornament. I had the year and then I had my family's last name on the bottom. Now, of course, if you make a lot of these to sell, I would definitely use a cookie cutter just, just for the time difference in making it. You see, I just made that opening. And the little perch is just a log that sticks out maybe a quarter of an inch. You just want something that the bird can sit on.
going to do some candy cane logs down the side. This just adds color. Yeah, I did not wash my hands, but I, I would urge you to wash your hands before doing the white. I'm surprised I didn't get anything on there. Now, and this is where you would put the name if you personalize. And you don't have to do anything fancy for the feet. We're just putting some orange there. You don't have to do anything more than that. Yeah, and again, just shape it the way I'm showing. And just, just keep doing it until you get it the way you want. And like I said, the first one I made was too big. Now I'm kind of pinching the feathers on his head into like a triangular shape. Okay, yep, too big, so. And again, polymer clay, take it off, make it smaller, if you made this mistake. You can always redo it. There we go, I redid it. And I gave him an orange beak. Now we're texturing the feathers on his head and in his tail. And I am using a knitting needle. And a red teardrop shape for his wing. And if you don't like the size of it, just keep doing it until you've got the size that you want. And texturing the wing. And you know I have to add the holly leaves and the berry. some at the bottom. Now you don't have to put the ones at the bottom, but I think it makes a big difference.
but make sure you get as close to the ends as you can because if you're going to personalize, you want to keep as much room in there as you possibly can have for names because some names are quite long. And I have had parents who have had children like with long middle names and they wanted me to write the first name and the middle name. Kind of like my, my great niece's name is Georgiana Charlotte. Can you imagine if I had to write that on an ornament? Of course, we call her Georgie for short, so that's what we write. But you have to think about that. Now, what I would do with a long net, two long names like that is I would do them on two lines. Put Georgiana on the top and then underneath that, put Charlotte. So if you ever run across that situation, just write a little smaller and do two lines. And my niece read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, one of my favorite books. And Mr. Darcy's sister is named Georgiana, and she fell in love with that name. So she said when she had a girl, she would name her Georgiana, and she did. And Charlotte is my niece's grandmother's name on her father's side. So she has a very long name, Georgiana Charlotte. And we're putting our berries on. And you don't have to put three. You can just put one if you prefer. I made this ornament for my mother, and she absolutely loved it. She would feed the birds in the winter. Here we are with the garlic press, and we're going to put that underneath the perch. And even though we're in South Carolina, it does get cold in the winter, and the birds are looking for food. So my mother would have bird houses outside the back kitchen door, hanging on the trees, and she would feed them at a certain time every day, and the birds would all be perched in the trees. It was just so funny. They knew she was coming out. And then when she came out with the bird seed, they would get all excited and they would just start calling everybody to come and eat. She would have hundreds of them there. And there we are. We did the little garland on the bottom, put some red berries in. And we're going to paint the black on the bird, because you know the cardinals have the black, and that will be painted on. Now the next thing is going to be our chimney. And I made the gray, now you can buy the gray, but I made the gray by mixing some black into, a little black into white. And then just make, make a little cubie log and press it on. And then just use your needle tool to make it look like big rocks, a big rock chimney. would be a nice gift for someone who has a log cabin house. Then we're going to put a little bit of snow on, white clay, you know, so it and blend it in really well. You don't want it to look like it's just lying there. Make it look like the snow went around the chimney. 
and we'll put some up on top. And it's melting because the chimney is hot. Not really, it's a birdhouse. And we're all done, and we're going to put them in the oven, bake him according to the instructions on your package of clay. And once he's cooled off, we're going to paint him. And I hope you enjoyed that. And there he is, all painted up. And you see the small one? I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to try to get all the others uh, to where I'm talking and get rid of the music. So see you next time. Bye.